Well, hello everybody and uh, welcome to the final session of the day. My name is Kate Robinson and I'm the University Librarian at the University of Bath in the UK and I'm your moderator for this session. And so for the next hour we have the pleasure of two um, presentations and some time for questions after these. So if you have questions that occur to you as the speakers are presenting, um, as Chuck was saying in the last session, please could you add them to the question and answer tab and I'll make sure that they're put to the panel once the presentations are over. And so we're going to begin uh, with a presentation from Magdalena Shuflita Juraska um, entitled The Bridge of Data Project from the Gdansk University of Technology as a connector among the scientific environment and society. So just to introduce uh, Magdalena, she is the head of the scientific information section at the Gdansk University of Technology Library. Her main areas of research and interests include open access, open research data, information literacy, scholarly communications and bibliometrics. Previously, she served as a library assistant in health sciences library at the University College Dublin, Ireland, where amongst other things, she provided information skills training for students. She holds her BA in librarianship from Warsaw University, Poland, and earns her Masters of Science in Digital Library Management from Boras University in Sweden. Magda has participated in numerous conferences and workshops, both national and international. She's a member of the IATL Special Interest Group for Library Services related to research data management, SIG Data, and is engaged with a number of associated projects. So I'll hand over to Magdalena now. <clears throat> Thank you, Kate, for introducing uh, me. I hope you can uh, hear me. And now I will try to share my screen. Uh, OK, just give me one second. Kate, please let me know if you can see my presentation. I can see it in. Uh, I can see it in front of. I can see it in a small piece. There we go. That's it. It's in the yes, middle of the I screen. Think, uh, Herminia needs to pin uh, pin up the presentation. Um, okay. Uh, so um, once again, many thanks for introducing me. Uh, we experienced today a little bit um, technical problems, so I wanted uh, my presentation to be more interactive and I prepare a few links for you uh, in the presentation. Unfortunately, during the test, the links um, don't work. So after my presentation, I will put them into the discuss uh, box on the uh, right side. And uh, if you will be interesting, uh, you can uh, you can check those links by um, by yourself. And now I would like to tell you a little bit more about our uh, the Bridge of Data project from Gdańsk University um, of Technology. Uh, I'm doing this presentation today on behalf of my uh, colleague, uh, Library di uh, Director uh, Anna Nawałek. Um, and uh, we would like to tell you um, a little bit more about um, challenging uh, project is almost finished. Um, we will finish the project uh, at the end of the year. And we started uh, our Bridge of Data project uh, at the end of 2018. Uh, this project was based on the previous one, um, the Bridge of um, Knowledge. And the Bridge of Knowledge project um, was more focused uh, on uh, um, open access. And this one, uh, the Bridge of Data, is uh, focused more on open data. And also by um, estab on establishing more open uh, science um, services. Um, also, this project um, uh, is um, established in the cooperation of uh, three Pomeranian uh, universities, uh, Gdańsk University of Technology, uh, we are uh, the leader of the project, University of uh, Gdańsk, and also Gdańsk Medical um, University. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the core element, uh, the core 
a challenge is um, open research data. So the central part of the project was to develop uh, the open research data um, repository. But not only, we also wanted to implement uh, adjunctive uh, services that in the same time provide uh, support and information for, uh, for dif at different levels. Not only for researchers, but also for the uh, librarians um, um, and uh, whole uh, society. Uh, so, um, our um, our one of the um, uh, one of the most important um, and challenging uh, services we wanted to uh, introduce is the Open Science um, Competency uh, Center, and uh, I'm very happy uh, I'm uh, that I serve as a leader of the Open Science uh, Competency Center, which is uh, situated at uh, at my uh, library. University of Technology um, Library. So uh, we focus on uh, cooperation between uh, different uh, stakeholders, between uh, researchers, IT specialists, uh, librarians, uh, and also publishers. And uh, we resolved to, um, to launch um, a center we, uh, which um, which uh, will support all those stakeholders uh, with knowledge uh, on three main uh, open science pillars. So in our open science uh, competency center, we uh, not only focus on uh, activities uh, regarding open research data, but also um, different, uh, different, um, different services um, re regarding open access and also open scholarly uh, communication. Uh, what we're doing um, at the moment uh, is um, basically um, working with uh, all the data management plans. We also trying to find uh, solutions for, uh, for researchers that have problems with data storage, uh, with efficient data retrieval, uh, backups, and uh, with data collections. We also uh, trying to setting up uh, workflows, for, uh, workflows for collabor uh, collaborative uh, data uh, collection and also uh, analyzes. Our core element is assistance and on-site tailoring um, uh, trainings. Um, we introduce a lot of different training at the beginning of um, of um, of the 2019. We um, we provided a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, trainings, but of course, a pandemic make, makes us to change a little bit our uh, behavior. So now, at the moment, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, online workshops uh, and sometimes also uh, cons consultations uh, by emails and um, and uh, phone our workshops um uh, they are um those workshops they are focused not only on uh, open research data but also we try to provide support um, on open access activities especially in these days uh, we have um, queries about um, publishing uh, publishing uh, according to uh, plan s but also um, uh, open scholarly co communication support um, something like um, training about open uh, peer uh, review uh, in the meantime uh, we also try to uh, to provide support on uh, metadata, uh, we're trying to find solutions for different uh, different scientific uh, disciplines, and also we teach uh, researchers and other st uh, stakeholders how to make uh, their research data and metadata uh, fair. So uh, here is. Um, the graph which uh, introducing um, our uh, our structure so uh, in the uh, in the um, like in the um, in the mean you can see our the bridge of data repository and um, <clears throat> Uh, at the back, you can see open access repository, the bridge of knowledge. That was the previous project, project I mentioned. Uh, and here you can see our uh, competency, open science competency uh, center. But um, 
Um, at the Open Science Competency Centers, we are not only focused on uh, open research data repository. We're doing a lot, a lot uh, of more uh, services and um, and uh, for, a, for example, sorry, I think. Uh, OK, and um, we're doing a lot of more. Uh, we provide a lot of more uh, services such as Polish um, publisher uh, copyright uh, policies and self archiving databases, which I uh, introduce you in one uh, in one minute and also management and publishing system for scientific journals from uh, from our Pomeranian uh, University. Uh, so uh, now please let me briefly introduce our uh, core services. I will provide um, links to them uh, after my uh, my presentation. So uh, first one is the um, Open Research Data uh, Repository. Uh, we call it at the moment Open Research Data Catalog uh, because uh, that, uh, that name was um, uh, indexed by uh, data uh, citation index um, from Clarivate um, Analytics. Uh, so uh, here you can see that um, our repository at the moment um, already contains over uh, 2,500 uh, data sets. So we are very proud uh, 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 about this, um, this number because it's quite, uh, it's quite huge uh, because um, regarding our uh, repository is quite, uh, quite young. So um, what's the, um, one of the most interesting thing in our um, research data repository is our metadata standard. Uh, this metadata standard is, ba uh, is based mainly on the data side. Uh, however, we um, adjust to, um, we adjust the standard to fulfill requirements for uh, different researchers from uh, many scientific disciplines. And we add some uh, core metadata uh, elements to this uh, standard. For example, um, information about uh, ethical papers, which were uh, very, very important, for example, for researchers uh, who uh, who are doing uh, research uh, based on the um, on the uh, animals data uh, or human uh, human uh, human data um, our repository is uh, indexed uh, by uh, several uh, aggregators uh, uh, as refree data of course uh, google uh, data search and from this year also by data citation um, index uh, we also provide here um, for example, uh, restricted access for uh, for people uh, who can't uh, share the data openly because of, for example, patenting. Uh, we also provide such uh, options. The second service uh, is a Polish uh, publisher copyright and cell archiving database. And uh, why we resolve to uh, establish uh, that kind of uh, service, which is very similar to <clears throat> Sherpa Romeo, because um, we uh, realized that uh, in Sherpa Romeo um, is um, is not um, uh, many information about Polish uh, scientific uh, journals. Um, it's we have in Poland we have something like uh, over three thousand uh, uh, three thousand uh, titles scientific um, titles, and in Sherpa Romeo it's only at the moment over one uh, one hundred. So we realize that uh, sometimes researchers. Uh, who uh, still want to publish in Polish uh, journals, they can't uh, find information about uh, about uh, policies and cell archiving uh, possibilities in Sherpa uh, in Sherpa Romeo. So uh, this database, the work is done by a very big team from uh, from my colleagues from Hulde Library. Um, 
so uh, many thanks for uh, for them for uh, for their uh, activities and the work is uh, still uh, in uh, in progress uh, and the work is i must i, I must say uh, that it's very very challenging because um we um uh, we faced uh, a lot of difficulties for example even with contact uh, contacting with uh, publishers and uh, editors uh, to uh, to check if the information on uh, providing on their website are uh, accurate um the second um the second uh, or the third service um we offer is um, quite new and it will be a fully uh, fully open in i think september october this year is a management and publishing system for scientific uh, journals so um this platform uh, is uh, based on uh, open uh, journal uh, system but uh, we resolve to adjust uh, online journal system and create platform for a journal published uh, by uh, Gdańsk University of Technology by University of Gdańsk and uh, Gdańsk Medical uh, University so um i think in september september october uh, we will have uh, something like three or more uh, tar uh, titles um, and the main reason especially was to reduce cost of uh, outsourcing um, of um, different um, publishing uh, platforms uh, as well we wanted to have everything in one place with uh, the similar um, similar uh, interface and from librarian's point of view it's also a new experience and a new challenge how to set up uh, set up this uh, this system because it's only based on the ojs uh, we had to provide a lot of um, and different, uh, different features to fulfill requirements for uh, our journals and editors. Um, the fourth service, um, it's also quite, um, quite new and um, we call it a virtual, uh, virtual uh, microphone. Uh, the work on that service is still in progress, but still, but now st you can uh, experience um, um, I'm not sure uh, over 2000 or even more uh, images um, right now. Uh, in the meantime, we will uh, think that uh, we have um, we will have uh, over 20,000 uh, digital uh, images diacoms uh, in diacoms uh, format uh, for use, especially by the patho uh, morphology uh, communities uh, by. Um, by schools, uh, by students, uh, by librarians, and other um, researchers. So I can't see, uh, I can't show you uh, the service right now. I will provide you a link to that. But uh, if I can encourage you later to uh, to check this um, uh, this service, you can uh, you will find a lot of. Um, different uh, images with very high um, resolutions uh, you can find different tissues and different organs uh, to recognize for example many disease um, you can uh, see description of the uh, disease uh, for example you can go to the tab uh, select uh, organ then you can um, you can see the um, the human uh, human body you can check uh, head and neck for example and then uh, oral uh, cavity and then you can explore a lot of um, a lot of um, images so um, the last service I would like to uh, introduce you is our um, scientific uh, conferences service and um, and that service uh, is uh, based on uh, Indico software and uh, Indico software was um, developed by uh, 
CERN from uh, Switzerland. And uh, we just launched the first um, conference um, via this system in April. It was our uh, Pomeranian uh, Open Science uh, Conference. So uh, we tested that um, Mm, that uh, that that service and uh, the, its uh, functionality uh, by themselves, uh, and I must say that it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's really it's really good uh, and uh, it works um, very well uh, for us. And uh, I think uh, the next our uh, open science Pomeranian Open Science uh, Conference also will be. Uh, will be based on that uh, on that um, service. Um, what's our future plans for uh, the end of uh, this year and uh, uh, and the early uh, early next one? Um, the first thing is uh, we uh, we would like to um, to launch um, our Polish national uh, chapter and engage research institutions in the Polish Data Stewards Competency uh, Center uh, National Network. So uh, we would like to establish. Um, working groups uh, where uh, working groups and platforms when uh, we can share uh, our experience with our colleagues from uh, Poland. We are aware of uh, many such kind of services uh, around the world uh, in uh, Australia or in Netherlands, but uh, still uh, uh, still uh, in Poland is uh, a little bit problem with um, that kind of uh, that kind of um, data stewards um, data stewards uh, competencies uh, and the second uh, the second big uh, project for us or big plan um, I really like it it's I'm not sure if uh, uh, if we will be ready in the beginning of 2022, but I hope so, is a knowledge uh, legal um, a knowledge legal hub. So uh, we would like to create uh, something like a um, database uh, for uh, different legal uh, issues uh, regarding uh, sharing research uh, data. Um, um, during uh, checking um, data management plans um, uh, and also uh, during uh, our uh, trainings with uh, with uh, with researchers, uh, we realized that uh, one of the most challenging uh, things uh, for them is uh, uh, is uh, legal issues. Uh, when they uh, have to share the data, so uh, we um, we established something like a legal consultations. Uh, we hired um, a lawyer, and we collected uh, seventy five uh, different, um, let's say, problems. Um, uh, different problems and now um, we have like a legal opinions on many of that uh, many of the issues so uh, we have data so now the only thing is to build our uh, our um, our um, database uh, one thing i uh, i forgot uh, to mention here for our future plans regarding um, repository uh, open research data repository is a certification so uh, when our uh, service is ready now uh, we can start to uh, start to apply for, uh, for example, Core Trust uh, uh, Seal certification and focus uh, to make uh, our um, our uh, data um, in very high um, high uh, quality. So um, thank you very much. I think I I haven't seen my uh, my clock, but uh, I think. Uh, I'm okay with uh, with my time. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, I will uh, provide uh, links for you in the discuss uh, box uh, right now. Okay. Thank you, and I'm waiting, of course, for the discussion and for your uh, questions. Thank Asita. you.
Thank you very much, Magdalena. How lovely to see such a wonderful example of collaborative and innovative work. Um, and there's some really interesting takeaways that I know you're about to share with us. Um, so that's a really nice thing to have too. Um, and your future plans do sound very, very exciting. Um, I mentioned that we would take um, questions at the end. Uh, um, if you uh, do have some, I can see there's a couple appearing in the box. So do please uh, keep putting those in there and we'll make sure that we can um, share those with our presenters uh, once we have moved through the next presentation. And so it's my great pleasure to introduce Teresa Olivia Ramos, who's going to be talking to us about library and faculty partnering to increase open access publishing amongst researchers. Teresa is an instruction librarian at the Faculty of Engineering from the University of Portugal and since 2006 where she's been dedicated to information literacy teaching in embedded learning contexts and specialised support to the community. Since 2016 she's been involved in the instructional design of online courses for the library, mainly for the second and third cycle of studies. She has a master's degree in information science as well as previous working experience in industry. Teresa, over to you. Oh, I think you just need to unmute. <laughs> I should know this. I should know this. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to be here today. Let me just start sharing my presentation. I hope you can see it. Is this is this visible for you, Kate? Can, could you let yes, me know? Yes, that's all good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm very pleased to be here today uh, in this session uh, together with Magdalena, such an interesting presentation as well. Uh, I'm representing a team. Uh, you see the names here below, a team which is actually an example of a, a faculty uh, and um, library uh, partnership, which is the, the the story I'm going to tell you about. Um, the, the theme, the topic is this one, library and faculty partnering to increase open access publishing among the researchers. So just to, for you to have a, an, a notion of our context, uh, we belong to the University of Porto, which comprises three campuses. Uh, we have around 30. 2,000 students and 14 faculties. The Faculty of Engineering is one of them and 16 libraries. So I work in one of those libraries, the Faculty of Engineering's library. Um, and there we have in this school, a techno technological school, we have around 7,000 students and around 740 faculty and researchers. Uh, concerning the programs that we have, we also have a bachelor and master in science and in sciences, I'm sorry, and PhD programs. The numbers are there so that you can check, and 21 research units. So our services has this name, Information and Documentation Services, and it comprises library, archive, museum, and also electronic services. Uh, our library has got six floors, uh, around 550 seats, and we have got this, all these facilities, study rooms, uh, offices, training room, and also exhibitions area. So, thinking about academic libraries for a start, uh, we all know that uh, part of its mission is to support learning and research activities uh, within the communities we're inserted in. But this is not easy, of course. We're always compelled to show the value we have, the impact we make, and this has impelled us also continuously to adapt our responses to the environment either challenges of the digital age or the changes, continuous changes in higher education. It hasn't been easy, but we have constantly been developing and performing new services and also reinforcing our educational role among others, of course. And partnerships have been actually connectors uh, that bridge that bridge us, libraries, to the communities that we serve. Uh, but since the digital information has become a standard, we have fought to be really differentiators uh, by providing added value services. And this is why partnerships has got, have got uh, such a, an important role for us. Academic libraries partnerships, liaisons are actually the common denominator 
for our goal of partnering and collaborating with the community. Without liaisons, we, we couldn't do it. Uh, and these liaisons have moved us to coordinate, to collaborate, and also to move to settings on site, working directly with faculty and also with researchers. So uh, librarians have been integrated gradually within uh, the, the institutions as faculty partners in the learning processes and also as collaborators in research and innovation. We've seen yesterday a beautiful example from, from, for example, from the University of Miami. It was really innovative. And to better interact and collaborate, academic libraries have also in the meantime uh, responded to the needs of the community, specializing already now in scholarly communication, also in scientific writing and in publishing within open science, because the community requests that, of course. And thinking about the context as well, higher education has been moving to online learning. The pandemic has been at the top of this uh, of this trend and it boosted of course the online training offer that we have also uh, to 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 be uh, greater and to be uh, huge um, simultaneously information literacy which we uh, which we provide we provide training on information literacy has become also a part of the soft skill set that is required by this new paradigm of long learning and simultaneously as well we have been receiving requests for online training of young researchers and phd students in this new domain of the open access and also in scientific publishing and also in bibliometrics, traditional uh, metrics. So we have to specialize, of course. We had to specialize, but not only in these fields, but also in the instructional design and redesign of online courses as well. So we have to start doing partnerships as well with educational technologists besides faculty as well. Concerning our library, our case, throughout the last decade, we have been increasingly and actively participating in teaching and learning processes, as many of you, I think. Uh, we have aligned our training offer even more and more with the community needs and also within the engineering programs curricula, either at an undergraduate and also graduate level. And this is the story that I bring to you today. This is the story uh, that happened inside the Faculty of Engineering between a partnership of, of a partnership between um, a laboratory, which is LEA, the Laboratory for Training and Training and Learning, that comprises uh, faculty members, and the library, the library of the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, we are partners in this unit course, or course unit, I'm sorry, publishing and scientific writing. Our target audience is, are actually uh, PhD students and young researchers, and we aim at developing the skills that they need to go through the publishing and scientific writing processes. We also aim at promoting, of course, open access scientific publishing, and we intend to raise awareness about the importance of open access publishing in today open science context as well. So how was it born? What is the context of this course unit? Well, the employers, um, the employers of engineers, engineer graduates have been uh, actually uh, throughout time recognizing that the graduates generally lack transversal skills that they can transfer to the professional context. And the faculty, Philp, promptly responded to this need because we have a, a strict connection with industry. Uh, we offered, we, faculty of engineering, created a program uh, which is focused actually on developing transversal skills in graduates. And this program includes this publishing and scientific writing course unit, which I'm going to talk about. So PhD students, master students as well uh, in the last year, researchers and also fellows from the University of Porto are our students. We intend to promote transversal skills in the research domain, 
this is a, a, a print screen from the faculty system where you can see the course unit page, a little bit of the course unit page. And uh, what we intend to develop uh, are these skills to publish more successfully, to write systematically, to know how to choose journals and do it more wisely as well, uh, to know how to navigate the peer review process and how to make a revision and a correction of the articles. This course unit has been kicked off already in academic year 2014-15. Uh, it had 1,5 uh, ECTSs and uh, 40 hours of study, more or less. Uh, out of which, uh, I guess, 26 uh, of um, self-study. We had so far 13 editions. And since we had this need to train more students, we started off with a B-learning version of the course. And most recently, of course, due to the COVID pandemic, we started with an e-learning uh, version of the course. The coordination team comprises uh, people from faculty and also from the library you have one coordinator, which is one professor and actually the editor in chief of a journal that I'm going to talk about and which is actually a tool, an important tool within this course unit. We have somebody from this laboratory of teaching and learning from the faculty who is responsible for managing the administrative process. And we have one professor and two instruction librarians who do the training, who have the classes with the students. Last but not the least, very importantly, we have two people, uh, the library director and also a colleague, a librarian, who are responsible for managing the publishing process within the journal's management system, which is hosted in OGS. And this is the journal. This is the, the cover of the journal, which is an online journal, of course. Uh, this was kicked off and or launched in 2015 in OGS platform. And this is actually the main working tool within the course unit. Students have the contact of a real life contact with the whole publishing process using this journal. You may later on, uh, if you like, access the URL to have a look. So what are the details of this partnership? How do we partner with faculty? Uh, as you can see in this image, uh, you can see the publication process within the journal with all the steps from preparing the manuscript to dissemination. And we have two different uh, processes, parallel processes that happen at the same time. Uh, the one, the first one is the training in information literacy skills and open access publishing that happens throughout the whole process. And then uh, at the same time, we, we provide services for support uh, that happen in the publication and dissemination phase uh, with uh, um, some detail that I'm going to give you now. So concerning the training in information literacy skills and open access publishing, we provide three classes out of six. Uh, they are provided and hosted by the two instruction librarians uh, who are doing uh, that, that task. Um, we privilege an hands-on approach with learning activities that allow students really to simulate real life situations within the research process. Um, we provide them with activities that uh, try to represent what happens along the research process. And the main topics uh, that we provide or that we discuss are the ones that you can see here on this slide. So besides information literacy skills in the context of the research process, we also talk about, of course, resources, techniques to search, reference managers, of course, but within the process, and open access publishing, open science, open resources, evaluation of research concerning metrics, citations and rankings, and also research dissemina dissemination, talking about author IDs, academic social networks. The other part that has to do with services concerning services of support to the process has to do, first of all, with the formal review and production of articles final version. It happens only after the, after the articles have been peer reviewed and accepted, of course, for publication by the editorial team, which is actually comprised of many uh, professors from the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, 
And it aims at checking whether the articles follow the guidelines, the author guidelines, which are provided uh, at, the, at the page of the journal, uh, specifically in terms of the structure of the article and also the bibliographic references. So the goal is really to ensure consistency and to produce the final versions for publication. Uh, I forgot to tell you, I'm sorry, that the students really have to um, write an article uh, within this, this uh, course unit and then they have the possibility to publish or not within the journal. Uh, one other thing that the library has uh, in its hands is the DOI attrib attribution. So uh, the, the OJS publication of each issue of the journal requires a lot of back office work. The library does that, does, the, does it. And each article final version is assigned with an issue, metadata, a DOI, and an author validation as well. So the library assigns the DOI and handles the registration also in Crossref. Besides, last but, last but not the least, and very importantly, we also index uh, the journal in information systems. The goal is really to enhance the journal's visibility. Uh, and uh, since the very beginning, since uh, 2019, we are indexed in the directory of open access since last year, 2020, in Scopus. And we have already proposed uh, to Web of Science Clarivate uh, to include the journal also in the database, and we are currently awaiting the final decision. Let's just hope it's positive. It will be, I'm sure. In 2018, there was a, a very good uh, turning point, so to say. Uh, we launched or presented a project for the university's first e-learning course unit on this topic, publishing and scientific writing in English language. Uh, this was a project that had the goal to offer a more comprehensive learning unit at the university and already thinking about international students as well, of course. And this was presented at a yearly contest uh, within the university, uh, of which you can see here the banner, uh, this workshop for innovation and pedagogical sharing, so to say. Uh, it promotes really this contest, uh, this uh, pedagogical innovation and excellence at the university. Uh, we are glad uh, to say that our project, among other, was awarded and uh, we have received, uh, received a fund to convert the course uh, to a new uh, version. So this is what happened. We have now... Uh, at in this very moment, we can say that we have an English version of the course, but this is a version which is different because it uh, went through a thorough redesign of the course. Uh, we had to adapt contents that we had already, but we still had to develop a lot more and uh, many interactive com uh, contents, uh, thinking about uh, the process, the research process and what the students really needed to know. Uh, we had a team uh, within this project of conversion that involved the, the University of Porto's educational team, technological education team, and two instruction librarians, and also worked together with the faculty, of course, the professors that also uh, are involved within the project. We uh, had a new outline after this process with a target with a target audience in mind and now the course has got three ECTSs and 81 hours um, of working time and it may be credited so it may replace so to say credited course unit within a program or it can be attended as well as an optional unit uh, for this conversion, I have to say that we have used some new technology that was available, uh, some uh, which was subscribed by the university, such as this Panopto system, which is a system that um, uh, serves uh, for recording uh, videos, educational videos, but also contains uh, a platform for streaming and also for organizing the content and then uh, streaming uh, to many uh, different systems, such as Moodle, which is the, actually the learning management system that we have used for the, for the course unit. 
And then we have uh, also worked with H5P, which is a system, a free system, to develop interactive activities, and which allowed us really to um, give some, uh, create more appealing uh, activities for the students um, and make them work uh, really uh, in a context, uh, in hand-on activities. LibWizard was also an option for creating uh, guides on the site, so to say, to explore the systems that uh, are embedded within the program, within the course unit. And together, we think that we have created something which is useful, at least uh, taking into account the feedback from, from the students, which I'm going to mention a little bit later. So the pilot uh, of the course kicked off in the second semester of this year, of the academic year. So it's quite new. It's fresh. We're still thinking about the results. And this is what I bring you now, some hints on the results that we have received so far. Actually, uh, these are the results from the whole demand and uh, the, the, the enrolled and the approved students uh, throughout the course unit since uh, its very beginning, since 2014-15 up to 2019-20. We still don't have data from uh, this last semester. So this is why it is not available. But the, as you can see, the demand was really steady. We can say that there was this growing trend uh, within a three-year uh, period of time, maybe. And uh, maybe this one, this was really one of the reasons why we had to invest on this training unit, because students needed it. They show that. Um, and we also wanted to, of course, reach a wider audience. Concerning the number of issues and articles published in the journal, and let me say that the students are not forced anyway to publish in the journal. They can decide throughout the process whether they want to or not to publish in the journal. Uh, this is also uh, a graph for the whole period from 2015 to 2021, we have uh, newer or mo most recent data in this case. Uh, there is a consistency over time also in the number of articles published per issue. Uh, although we can see an evolution here uh, in the growth trend, if we look at the, the bars from 2020 uh, uh, onwards, maybe this has to do with the indexation in Scopus. We think that that could be the reason. Uh, because it helps, uh, it gives visibility to, to articles, of course. And concerning the feedback that we have received, students strongly agree um, that the course is useful. Uh, they develop skills that they need throughout their PhD process or their research uh, work. Concerning limitations, because we have them, of course, um, we have the need to do some more qualitative analysis. It is missing, really, but we have time constraints. It's always, we're always in a rush, but we will really like to have a look at the qualitative uh, analysis. We also have to make a continuous follow-up and monitoring of the course unit, mainly due to the contents and to the learning activities, because as you know, systems are always changing and uh, we need to adapt, constantly adapt contents and uh, also the learning activities. And we would also like in the future to take a careful look at the learning analytics. Uh, we need to do that analysis because it informs on further needs that we may have and changes that we can do. For instance, uh, in this pilot, we were already able to see that because the library activities were not mandatory, there was um, a, a rate uh, of students, a lower rate, that did it because they were not mandatory. So we have made already a recommendation to integrate the activities from the library within the uh, assessment within the course unit. So, but this is only an example of what the learning analytics can provide us, the information that they can provide us. So, to conclude, and I hope I'm not being too long already, 
we think that this is a good example of how the academic library really can be active, can be an actor, like Professor Fernanda Rolo told us yesterday. Uh, instead of being only a connector, we can also be actors and participate in learning and research activities uh, actively. Uh, we take different and relevant uh, responsibilities. We provide training and information literacy and open access and open science. And we support, we create services to support publishing and scientific writing process. So we can say really that we can be relevant partners in increasing open access publishing among this target audience, the researchers. So thank you for your attention. I hope this was enlightening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa. That was uh, that was fascinating and another wonderful example of what we can achieve through partnerships and through constantly developing our services with others. That's truly magnificent. Thank you. Um, we have time for some questions, uh, and I can see that we have one at the moment uh, in the uh, Q&A. Um, so if people are thinking of others, now's your time to put them in. Um, but maybe I could start with that one. And Magdalena, I think you probably have seen this, but um, we have um, Siobhan Smith asking you uh, if you will try to get the missing journal information into Sherpa Romeo. <clears throat> um, uh, thank you, Shimon, uh, for this question. Um, at the moment, uh, we do not, um, and the reason uh, why is uh, when it, when we uh, when we did plan for uh, for this <clears throat> for this uh, service. Uh, it was uh, at the beginning of 2018 and between 2018 and 2020 Sherpa Romeo uh, changed uh, change their APIs, changed interfaces uh, and a lot of things uh, <clears throat> changed in uh, Sherpa Romeo. So uh, what we're doing now uh, we already contacted, uh, but it was last year, we already contacted uh, with uh, GISC uh, and uh, Sherpa Romeo. And when we finish our databases, uh, we will uh, we will uh, try to uh, to find solution if we can uh, provide uh, our data to 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 the databases. Uh, if not, probably we need uh, we will uh, we will be doing that by traditional model. So uh, we just need to fill um, fill out um, the application for the new journals or for the new um, new publisher. What we did. Uh, last year, uh, we took uh, their API and uh, we provide information from uh, Sherpa Romeo into our um, databases about uh, about our journals databases, because uh, our platform is not only contains information about Polish journals but also. Um, it's a part of the Chris uh, system, so it's a lot of uh, information for uh, journals where our researchers where they publish. So now, uh, if we uh, have um, a journal like from different publisher like a Springer uh, or whatever, uh, if uh, they have um, Sherpa Romeo policy established, it's a link on our website to uh, to Sherpa Romeo with that um, with that policy. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, we have another question, uh, this time for Teresa, which is about how many hours of teaching is done for the course on scientific writing that's asked by Pin Pin Yeo. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for the question, Pin Pin. Um, we are providing 22 hours of classes. Uh, so within the, the whole 81 hours, this is the time of classes, is spent in classes. The rest is for autonomous work. That's uh, that's that's very significant, isn't it? <laughs> Gosh, um, not seeing yes. any other questions there uh, at the moment. Um, but if you don't mind, I'd I'd like to ask one actually. And um, one of the things I was wondering about, um, and I think it came quite early in your presentation, Magdalena, when you talked about what's happened in the last year and that shift to moving everything online um, from the one-to-one -one, um, um, teaching that you were doing at some points. Um, I wondered, 
from your experience of this year, just how much you think you might um, retain going forwards next year. Uh, and I mention that because certainly in our research services ourselves with our teaching, we found uptake from researchers to be significant in the online arena, more so than possibly people coming in face to face. I wonder how you found it. Oh, uh, that's um, that's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's difficult because, um, mm, frankly speaking, I don't know uh, mm -hmm. because uh, some of the researchers, um, they prefer online education and they just used to. Uh, some of the uh, researchers um, or uh, trainings um, in the online mode, they are not efficient. For example, today my presentation, I wanted to be more interactive and I wanted to show you uh, my service, not only the print screens, yes, on the, uh, I wanted to show you the data, but it was impossible for technical difficulties. <laughs> so uh, I think that we need to adjust and um, we need to take uh, time and see what happened next few months because the situation is not resolved. As uh, even you mentioned for me today, <laughs> so uh, it's I don't have good answer for that. Really, maybe Teresa. Oh uh, <laughs> no, I really can't tell. It's the same. So I agree one, with you. One to watch. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, one to watch. That's great. <laughs> um, not seeing any more questions, um, but oh yes. Uh, oh well. Praise, that's very nice. Thank you, Samuel. Um, <laughs> and congratulations, that's lovely. Um, I had just one more, if I may then, and uh, moderator's privilege. Um, I was thinking, Teresa, when I was listening to just such a comprehensive program with so many different aspects to that, um, and the buy-in from faculty, um, I was wondering how you achieved that. Academic time is very precious, isn't it? Um, and to get them to commit to um, such a comprehensive um, uh, new initiative coming from a library, um, I, wonder, I wondered how that went and how you managed to engage with them in that way and really get them behind you. Um, well, we were actually um, invited, so to say, that was not actually um, something that came from the library to the community, but it was the other way around. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it started in this laboratory I was uh, talking about, this laboratory for teaching and learning. And uh, since they wanted to integrate information literacy and also open access uh, within the program, um, they thought about the library. So uh, we were partners since the very beginning of the course. And then there was this uh, evolution a long time uh, that uh, was actually... Uh, very rich and also due to the, the brainstorming sessions we have with faculty and the constant communication. Uh, I think this is actually a big word for us uh, and for all of us, actually, not only librarians. Mm -hmm. Communication is the key, actually, uh, to always constantly uh, uh refine information and talk about things and try to uh, to uh, make an evolution and also try to innovate and uh, always looking at the needs from the community. So it was the case, I guess. That's fantastic and great that they came to you and thought of you in that respect. That's just brilliant. A testimony, Thank you. I think, to being well Thank positioned. You. Thank you. So I'm not seeing any more questions, but so maybe now is a good time to stop and just to thank you uh, um, presentations and crikey you know that's a very quick presentation that underlies such a huge amount of work um, that, that's got you in the position where you can talk about these things but um, you know the, the amount of work and the comprehensive nature of what you've done is really phenomenal so thank you very much for sharing that with us today hugely appreciate it and I Thank think you. we'll just close the session at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.